Hello, sportsmen. Hey, I try to put on a happy face for this television show, get excited about the features, but you know, we're going to talk about assault weapons. This crime bill that just passed could be disastrous for sportsmen. On my program in 1989, I put on a feature about assault weapons when it was once again under the gun, so to speak. Well, we've had big changes now. We're going to talk about that, so stay tuned. I'm Fred Trost. It's time for The Practical Sportsman. Hello, my name is Leroy Pyle. I'm a police officer in San Jose, California. And during most of my 25-year career, I've been involved in firearms training, a little training, education, and also competition. As a result, I've also gotten involved with private citizens uh, using firearms, a lot of safety uh, schools, and, and a lot of competition. Uh, I'm familiar with some of the controversy involved with firearms now, a lot of emotions. In fact, we're about an hour and a half away from Stockton, California, where I'm sure you're aware uh, of a recent tragedy. I don't mean to belittle that tragedy. I can share those emotions. Uh, about a week after that, I had two of my partners killed on the streets of San Jose. So I understand the emotions. But part of my job as a police officer for all these years has, to be, has been to cut through the emotions and get to the facts. That's the only way you can settle an issue. Uh, you have to have the truth. And I'd like to share a little bit of the facts with you because I honestly feel that uh, some of the emotions here have impaired any ability to make a good judgment. Uh, I have some firearms available that I'd like to show you. I have some in fully automatic. I have some in semi-automatic, and I have some that were designed for hunting. I'd like to show you a comparison, and I think if you have a little better understanding of what these firearms really are for, what they do, what they look like, uh, you too can maybe cut through some of the emotions and make what I hope would be um, a good decision. The confusion and misunderstanding over firearms is a result of the mislabeling. Uh, I have firearms here on the table. I have a fully automatic assault rifle, uh, and many times the press likes to use those words, trigger words, if I might add, assault rifle, military, fully automatic. This is the fully automatic firearm. It's an AK-47. Primary feature is with one pull of the trigger, it will fire repeatedly. It'll fire until you either release the trigger or you expend all the rounds. So let me show you. This is banned, it's prohibited, and limited almost virtually to police and military use. A citizen cannot go into the store and purchase this. And yet, uh, this is usually one that's displayed uh, on your television set. These are usually the terms used by the news media. This is a semi-automatic firearm. A look-alike, but very much different. One pull of the trigger, you get one round. So you get another round, you have to pull the trigger again. Let me show you that. If you notice, these two firearms look alike. They look very much alike. They operate entirely differently. This one is legal, semi-automatic. This one is an illegal, fully automatic. They look alike. Here, I have a hunting rifle. This is also semi-automatic and one used for hunting game. This also, being semi-automatic, fires one round with each pull of the trigger. If you notice, these two do not look alike, but they function alike. They are virtually the same, only cosmetically different. It's important to keep that in mind. A person will say, this is fully automatic. The uninformed, most of the time the press, will refer to this as a fully automatic assault rifle and this as a fully automatic assault rifle. Please, by definition, this is the assault rifle. This is the only one that's fully automatic. It's prohibited uh, for purchase uh, in the United States except by police and law enforcement. A semi-automatic is just that, semi-automatic. One pull of the trigger, one round. That's a technology that's over 100 years old. If you ban that technology, you ban about 20 million firearms. Let's take a little closer look at them. This is the semi-automatic technology I referred to. You notice cosmetically there is a difference, but if you get to the working parts, the actual action, they're identical. In fact, let me show you just exactly how identical. This is the military look-alike. If you take off a cover, the working part, compared to this hunting rifle, take off the cover, and the working parts are identical. Again, semi-automatic technology. One pull of the trigger, one round. Entirely different from the military fully automatic assault rifles. 
I'd like to show you how a simple cosmetic change could lend to the confusion in this attempt to try to define something as an assault rifle. This is a very popular, very common semi-automatic rifle. Uh, it's in a very popular and common caliber, that's caliber 223. I'd like you to watch while I just change the looks and see if you can't see how it might get a little confusing. Officer Pyle is making a conversion right here from a sporting rifle, one commonly used in hunting and target shooting, to a military-style rifle. And the conversion he's making is more specifically to an assault style, like an AK-47. But what does assault type rifle mean? Are we referring to the way it operates or the way it looks? The big problem is that guns aren't a great deal different in the way they operate. There are only a few types of actions and all of the fully automatic weapons, the true assault rifles, are in the same category as heroin and cocaine. They're illegal. What Officer Pyle is putting together here is a fashionable type of drug weapon. The looks are fashionable in the drug world because this looks like a military assault rifle. But the actual working parts are nothing more than hunting rifle parts. This isn't an automatic rifle, but it looks like one. It's not a military weapon, but it looks like one. In the minds of many anti-gunners, the fact that a semi-automatic hunting rifle can be converted to look like this makes it a military type or an assault type rifle. As you can see, just changing from wood to plastic makes a big difference in its appearance and probably would even change a person's opinion. And is that what makes a difference, whether it has a wooden stock or if it has a plastic stop and maybe a bipod? The semi-automatic mechanism is common to millions of firearms, not just the rifle. I'm sure any of you shoot trapper skeet, you know that a semi-automatic shotgun is very, very popular. For home defense or for target practice, the semi-automatic pistol uh, is very, very popular. In fact, uh, much more popular nowadays than the revolver is. Um, terms like assault rifle are hard to define. I don't know what an assault rifle is. I doubt very much if uh, a member of BATF could tell you exactly what an assault rifle is. Any type of legislation that's framed or drafted in relation to assault, what we're referring to here this morning is assault of, or paramilitary type weapons, uh, there will be an inherent difficulty in drafting this. And the difficulty is that uh, it's going to be very hard to draw a clear uh, differentiation, distinction between uh, what we have as an assault type rifle and a semi-automatic sporting weapon. Uh, the assault weapon has a, has a very menacing appearance to it. Uh, but this gun, technologically, as far as how it, it fires, is, is pretty much the same as a sporting semi-automatic rifle, with the exception that this firearm uh, has a, an exotic type appearance to it. Put a standard type stock on it and remove the bayonet mount. Uh, it would also even have the appearance of a, a sporting type weapon. Frequently hear reference to the fact that a semi-automatic rifle can be easily converted to fully automatic. That's not true. Why? Because these military style assault weapons of today are not easily and readily convertible without extensive knowledge of modifications to the weapon and or a substitution of available parts. Now, in my 12 years within the unit, considering the, enorm the enormous amount of firearms that we have taken into custody, and that's over 50,000, I would say, and these including the ones from the hardcore gangs and from the drug dealers, our unit has never, ever had one AK-47 converted, one Ruger Mini-14 converted, an H and K-9193 never converted, an AR-180 never converted. So this media blitz of many of these assault weapons or supposedly military-style weapons are being converted to full automatic is not true. So millions of law-abiding citizens own this semi-automatic technology. It would really be a shame if you legislated against that technology and it would be really sad if that legislation was as a result uh, of just some confusion and misunderstanding, and especially by mislabeling. I hope I've been able to help you with some of this information. When that feature was aired back in 1989, the big fuss over assault weapons subsided for, well, 
five years until now. When the crime bill is passed, we are faced with a ban on what's said to be 19 types of assault weapons. Now, I've heard that this actually covers somewhere between 180 and 200 different guns. Now, guns, I mean, let's take a look at this. Here's a gun that can shoot and hold, I don't know, 50, 75, 100 shots. It holds BBs. You say, well, a BB gun, that doesn't hurt anybody. People have been killed by a strategic shot by a BB gun. So even though this is a, a target gun, this can be lethal. We have other guns that can be used. Here's one that reportedly could be banned. We're, we're really not sure on the language of this bill. It's called a Ruger 1022. It holds 22 cartridges, which are very small. A clip goes in here, like so. And that's how you load it. It holds 10, which supposedly is legal under this law. But if you take that clip out, you can buy a clip like this. This holds 30 cartridges, which supposedly is going to be illegal. Now, is it true that a gun that is capable of holding a clip like this is also illegal? Well, this is a little uncertain at this time, but a lot of controversy is flying. And what about shotguns? Oh, the anti-gun people say, no, no problem with shotguns. If you look at this real close, you can see the pellets in here. There's sometimes hundreds of pellets in a shotgun shell. A shotgun can also shoot a slug, like this heavy slug right inside here, an ounce of lead all at once, or it can be broken down into 15 or 20 buckshot pellets, which is what this is. Well, you could shoot this shell this from a single-shot shotgun, like this old one here, came out of uh, somebody's basement, is all rusted, but you could put this 12-gauge shell in here, pull that hammer back and fire it, and it would be the equivalent of shooting 15 or 20 shots at once from a small handgun. That's the power at close range of a shotgun shell with buckshot. So you can see the problems that are looming here uh, with the control of guns. One thing that we <laughs> hear about is an assault rifle, what it looks like. This could be called a riot gun. It looks very much like a riot gun if the barrel was a little shorter. But you know, riot guns, assault rifles, they're all derivatives from military weapons and they are used for sporting purposes. Now, here's something that happened at our hunting awards banquet last year. Very interesting story about a young fellow who used a riot gun. From, from what I heard in the story, this is a 13-year-old kid, Chad Keister. Yeah who's out there hunting with a police riot gun. <laughs> that, that's what you put in your story here, John. He's out there with a riot gun, but you see his stepdad...